All right, welcome back, viewers, and welcome to the Let's Do Video Boardroom for the first time, Gary Sorrentino. Gary, could you please introduce yourself to our viewers? Hey, thanks for having me. So my name is Gary Sorrentino, and I'm uh, the global CIO for Zoom. So, so you're you're very familiar with uh, with with rooms like this. I've I've looked up a, your LinkedIn. I've looked up your resume. You've been in a few rooms that that kind of look like this. You, you're you're. I think my banking career took, uh, took me through a lot of boardrooms that in today's standards were probably, let's just say, misdesigned, <laughs> not very collaborative. Now, we could talk about that for ages, but what I really want to talk to is there's something special about your role. You, you do some things that the typical CIOs don't do that I I just think is really fascinating. Can you can you share that with us? Sure. I mean, the part, the unique part about my job is I really do get involved with the clients, and I love that part of my job. That It allows me to really work with clients to figure out that balance between what Zoom does and what they need. And so originally I, I retired and I met Eric uh, late 2019, early, very early 2020 and started with Zoom just before the pandemic. Uh, what a great time to start, start with Zoom. And the world changed and people are trying to figure out it's still changing, it's still evolving. We're bringing on a new generation and to be able to help teachers and doctors and, and even CIOs figure out what is tomorrow going to bring? How do we accomplish that? How do we get help from our, from our suppliers and our vendors like Zoom? How do we leverage the, these um, these software packages that we buy in these, these different uh, applications and solutions? And so to work with CIOs, look, I'm so glad I'm still in the industry working with CIOs because we are finally at a place where we are going to change the way people work. And I'm so happy I'm still here to see that happen. That's awesome. And and I think you kind of, it's kind of like your mission is, is sort of what I've been doing for my entire career since Zoom, Zoom, Zoom became a company. I've been telling the world, this is a workplace enterprise business tool. And it's hard to get that message across because it's so friendly. <laughs> it's such a friendly little happy little app. When it first came out, everyone, the, the other analyst said, David, it's not as good as Interop as some of the others, so it's not a business. So I'm like, it doesn't matter. Everyone could just load it up and start making calls. And and then when the pandemic hit, it's like, oh, you know, we're using it for our yoga studios and for this and that and everything else. And I'm like, no, it's an enterprise business tool. And I think they might not listen to me, but they they know you. They know you. They're going to listen to you if you say, no, 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 no. This is not a, a yoga app. This is an enterprise business tool, they're going to get the message. So the only thing I say different is I don't use the word tool. I use the word solution because I think that that's what Zoom is. Zoom is really, a tool will fill a, a niche, like, you know, a hammer hits a nail. Okay. I think Zoom is more of a solution because it really starts to look for how can people use it specific to their needs. And I think that's what really the secret of Zoom is, is as you know, Zoom's got a big online presence got a big SMB presence, right? And a large enterprise presence. And isn't it hard to almost fathom that a single user of Zoom is using probably the same, is using the same version as maybe one of the highest paid CEOs in the land, okay? And at the end of the day, they're both using Zoom, but they're using it differently. And the solution brings them value in different ways. And I think that's the unique characteristic about Zoom over the other platforms is, it functions for that single person who just needs to be productive. And you said, whether they're running a yoga studio, whether they're just talking to mom, but it also functions in the way a CEO is talking to his board. And it's all the same platform. That, that's a great point. And, and I can back that up, by the way, about Zoom being a platform, Zoom being a solution. We're used to thinking of it as a tool because I thought of it as a meeting tool because that, that's the flagship product. That's, that's the golden gem. It's, so, it's, it's still the best. That, that got us there. Zoom meetings are, are still the best. Uh, and so I, we used to think of it as a tool, but now it is a solution. And I've been putting out a ton of videos lately on YouTube. I've really been cranking them out and they've been all been doing well. But there's one video I have that is outperforming anything else I put out and I put it out a few months ago and it's still outperforming and it's Zoom Workplace. I, I did a video about Zoom Workplace. I've done a video about Zoom Scheduler and Zoom this and Zoom, but people keep watching this video because they want to learn and understand more about Zoom, like you said, uh, as a solution. Uh, so that that is what's happening. I do think people have to look at Zoom and it's great. You're right. During the pandemic, we were the meeting tool of choice for sure. Absolutely. 
and, and still are in many cases, but we have meetings, we have phone, we have contact center. Okay, those are the three tenants, I would say the three tools using your words if you want to be there. But the real power of Zoom is in between those. What we do pre, post, and during a meeting. What we do pre, post, and during a phone call. What we do in contact center pre, post, and that client engagement is the real power of the product, right? So it's not like, it's like continuous meeting chat. It's great to start a meeting even before the meeting starts. It's even better to have value in that meeting before the meeting starts. It's even better to figure out that we might not need that meeting because everything we needed in that meeting got done and it all got done asynchronously. And so the real power is picking up the picking up the solution and saying, how do I leverage this in the best way? And that's the part I love the best, meeting with different companies and talking to them about the things that are inside of Zoom that even sometimes Zoom users don't know. But by the way, that is the one thing about Zoom that frustrates me is that I think everyone's getting the important message that it's not just about meetings, it's a platform. There's a bunch of productivity solutions within the platform, all tied together by AI. But there's so many juicy little gems in there that people don't know about. The continuous uh, chat thing is amazing because I use chat in meetings. I, I Here's a link, here's a thought, I send someone a private message, the meeting ends and it's gone. It's just gone. No matter what platform you're using, it's just gone. Unless you turn on the continuous meetings in Zoom, it just becomes a normal chat. The meeting, the project, whatever, it continues. The work continues. It's not, okay, see you next meeting. It's still happening. You're making chats about it. It's, um, it's brilliant. It's awesome. And like you said, a lot of users probably don't even know about it because one out of a thousand new features, a million new features that Zoom just keeps adding. I think what they don't even know is talking about productivity. I could be on this call with you and be double booked. Who's never double booked? But I can watch the meeting chat and I can add commentary to that meeting that I'm not part of. So when someone says, hey, Gary's going to get it done by Friday, I can go, no, Gary is not going to get it done by Friday. I'm not even in that meeting. And so to be able to multitask, to be able to see what's going on in the meeting, you're not there. To be able to add value. Hey, I can't make the meeting, but my opinion on this is we should probably delay the solution. We should probably accelerate the solution. Whatever my opinion is, I can get it to all the meeting participants at once, pre-meeting, during meeting, or post-meeting. Yeah, and I, so by having that sorry. work that way makes me so much more productive. And I'm thinking about it from the other side, of uh, 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 the other point of view. It makes you more productive. But what if I'm one of your colleagues who's in that meeting and, oh, you know, we're talking about this and that. We need to know if Gary's going to be able to do this. Oh, Gary's in another meeting. Guess what? I'll ask Gary tomorrow and then I'll tell the rest of you on Friday. Or wait a minute. Gary just said he can't do it. He's not even here. He just said he can't do it. We can continue on with our work. We were going to have to wait till Friday. Now we're just continuing on with the work. The productivity is... Uh, if you if you understand the, the Zoom as a solution that we're, and that's just one example. That's one yeah. little, one, little, one little, little feature. One of the we were talking about were avatars before, right? How are how is that middle ground? A lot of people aren't camera ready, especially maybe for the first meeting of the day, the last meeting of the day. Maybe they have child care problems, maybe they have elder care problems, right? But they want to be participative. And there's nothing worse than just having that photo. Because you yeah. don't even know if they're there. And and you and and they kind of move to the bottom of the screen, but but at the end of the day, wouldn't it be great if you could interface where at least when I nod, it nods, and when I shake my head, no, it shakes my head, no. And wouldn't it be great to be that middle ground? I want to be not camera ready, but I want to be present. Yeah. Right. And I think that that's that's some can, of the. Can you turn it on a second great, for our viewers? I don't uh, have mine set up. Turn you. mine on. I hope I hope no one doesn't mind the way I design mine. I think it looks almost like me. Right, pretty yeah, close. Pretty right? good. It it did a pretty good job of designing it, but you know, I like this. I don't I like agree. that it's. I like that it's I you, like and the AI helped you helps you make that rather than just being a random cartoon. That's cartoon yes. Gary. When you when you hit plus, it it does a lot. I added the tie, right? Even though I haven't worn a tie in four years, I added the tie, right? But this at least makes you think you're talking to somebody, and especially for the next generation of workers who wants to be part of the meeting but doesn't need their camera on. Yeah, and and I, I will say, I know a lot of people in my generation are going to say, no, I hate that. I I understand. Um, the younger generation does not hate it. I've been on Twitch a long time, and it used to just be 
people like me on Twitch, and now there's a lot of that on Twitch, and they're comfortable with it. And and for the reasons Gary explained, sometimes people aren't camera ready, or sometimes people just aren't camera people. They just do not want to be on camera ever. But I still want the nodding head. I want the eye con. Uh, what you know, what looks like eye contact. I want the smiling. I want the nodding. Um, it is better than the phone, even if uh, you're of my generation and you're like, you're, I'm not. I don't. I understand, but don't don't write it off is what I'm saying. But as as we talked about, I think the one thing that we're seeing with generation is not all of us. Not all of us are applied to the rules of our generation. I'm yeah. a boomer for sure, right? But I love asynchronous work. And that was something that Zoom taught me. I'll, I'll be honest with you. When I first started with Zoom, I called someone. I went like this and I called them and it said, call declined. Now in my <laughs> last job, we would have to go find that person, right? But in this job, the next text said, I'm sure whatever you need, we could handle over chat. So yeah. I said, new company. Lots of lots lots of bright young individuals working here, right? Very energetic, very forward thinking. I put my request in chat. I got an answer a couple hours later of what I needed. It was handled asynchronously. We were able to continue it. You know, this boomer learned asynchronous work works. And so I hope I'm a boomer by age, but I hope I'm grabbing from all the different generational positives and becoming that multiple mindset that we keep talking about. Yeah, I, I think we're moving away from this is how boomers work. This is how well, no one cares about Generation X. This is how you know this is how Generation Z works. But now it's just about what's the best way to work, and everyone can figure out. It's not it's not that hard anymore. It's not like oh, the new technology is so hard. It's 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 easy. That's the whole point. And about twenty five percent of the workers globally will be Gen Z by the end of this year. And what is it? Over ninety percent will be interviewed by millennials. Wow, it's it's quite quite staggering. But you know what? We're ready. We're ready for a new way of thinking. We're ready to bring on what I like to say, wicked smart Gen Zs, right? They're smart. They're so smart, right? At the end of the day, they add so much value. They add they add so much diversity to thinking. They're thinking different than we thought in a good way. Our music was better, though. Um, our music was, well, they still listen to our music, okay? But our music was better. Every every generation says that. Okay, now I have actually a, a tough, almost an uncomfortable question for you, but it's a Zoom question and it's a CIO question. And and it's the big question, which is what I'm hearing out there is from from businesses on the business side, um, not the yoga side, is, is uh, the pandemic hit, we got on Zoom, everyone loved it, we're happy with it, we're thrilled with it. Somehow along the way we got Teams, it sort of just kind of popped up on our computers one day and we were using Teams for some stuff. And now the big, big boss is saying, um, do I need both? And, and what I'm finding is, is um, we send our Teams, we do a study, we ask our users, what are you using this for? What are we using that for? And if they come back and say, eh, we could, we're okay with Teams, then we say, okay, we're using Teams. If they come back and say, we need Zoom for some stuff, it's a conversation. What do we need it for? Are you sure we need it? Are you sure we can't do it with Teams? It seems like Teams has the easy win. It seems like Teams is the easy win, and Zoom's got to have to fight for each thing. It's no longer Zoom or Teams. It's Zoom and Teams. Are we are we in a world where Zoom and Teams is is something we're going to start talking about? I don't think it was ever an or because even during the pandemic, they still used Microsoft, right? You still need AD, you still need SharePoint, you still need different uh, Excel, Word, PowerPoint, right? So the Zoom ecosystem is the largest ecosystem in the world and most of the enterprises do use it. I think it's an and world. And there are places where Zoom excels, where it gives you quality, ease of use, especially when you're dealing with external parties, right? External parties is a place you cannot make a mistake. You cannot give a bad customer experience. Customer experience is right up there with employee experience. And when an employee is having a bad experience dealing with an external client, and an external client is having a bad experience, and you get EX and CX wrong, you get lousy TX. And so at the end of the day, I think you have to really look at where the value is. But I think there's a couple of things here. Zoom is always going to be giving you better value more fun more advanced functionality it's going to give you solutions that are going to make people who want to be productive as productive as possible like in the area of ai companion we shouldn't have to decide who gets ai we should have to make sure that everyone gets ai because at the end of the day forget this birthright everyone needs it because if they're writing a chat to an internal colleague and zoom can help 
or they get off a two hour meeting and Zoom can help summarize their chat, or they need help composing a, an email to an external client, we, they should have the benefit of some of this high quality AI solutions that Zoom is putting out. And so first I think the, the real goal is to look at what are you using it for? How are you using it? Are you leveraging it completely? Again, as we talked about, so many people are trying to figure out or when and should be the right thing, but how to leverage it also. So if, if you're using Zoom and you're using it either internally or externally or both, I think the one goal is make sure when you make any decisions, you're looking at it, you're, you're it's installed correctly because most people don't integrate it well. And it does integrate with, with almost every platform that's out there that's notable. I think at the end of the day, it really is about leveraging it correctly figuring out which employees can get the most value for them and offering the employees the flexibility of solutions. If I'm working with external clients and I need a, a very reliable, easy to use, feature rich application to make productivity, to make my customer experience better, then go with the right products. And I think that's the decision that companies have to look at today. Um, definitely an and, but definitely making sure that it's an and, but with full leverage. Nice. What, one, one tip I have, if, if you're, if you're a Zoom fan and we want to make sure your company stays on Zoom, just make sure everyone's on the Zoom chat. I think once you're on, and this applies to any chat, but in particular Zoom chat, once, it's so sticky. You get all your stuff in there. You get all your friends in there. It's like people will fight. Don't take my chat away. Don't take my Zoom chat away. Uh, I think it's the stickiest part. You know, I always say that that meetings is the lead. Meetings is your, is your flagship. Um, but if someone sends me another meeting link at the end of the day, who's going to cry about it? But if you ask me to move off of Zoom chat once I'm embedded in there, mm, that's going to be yeah. a fight. I, I think, and it's also using all the power of Zoom chat. Um, that is the other thing. Don't don't look at this just as I send you a hello, you send me a hey, right? There's so much power built into it. The right thing is to experience it. You know what I tell people all the time is when I first met Eric and I got my first free version of Zoom to try out, I pushed every button. I pushed every single button, right? Because that's the only way I can learn. And, and sometimes people don't want to go a level down or, or one down. But I think at the end of the day, um, the more you figure out how to use the experience, the more you'll see the value of it. You know, we were talking before about how users don't know some of the features. Uh, I, I think just the power of chat itself is one of the things that users don't know. I think people don't, I think there's some awareness that Zoom has a chat but everyone has a chat. There's very few companies that have good chat these days, which is kind of concerning, but there's very, and it's top tier. It's one of the top tier chat UC platforms out there. And I don't think people realize that. There's a lot of, like you were saying, there's a lot of power stuff within the chat once people start playing with it. Yeah, and, but I also think inside, inside the meetings, right? Transcription, translation, um, there's just so many things that we can do from inside of these products, the avatars, the backgrounds, right? Uh, the 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 makeup features. There's just you know the the noise reduction, so we don't hear the dogs and the cats, right? There are just so many things that we can do to make us have a better experience. Uh, just you have to get through the adoption stage. Well, and that leads to something else I want to talk about, which is if I have a wish list looking in the future, uh, when I think about Ask AI, and I'm very excited about Ask AI, Ask AI Companion coming out, I'm already playing with AI Companion all the time, but Ask AI Companion, because it is outside of the meeting. You were saying we need some of the help outside of the meeting. We're so spoiled by the AI in the meetings. It's like having what I've always wanted, a smart friend who doesn't argue with me. He always helps me. He doesn't say, David, why are you asking that stupid question? He answers the question. He helps me. He doesn't say, David, why weren't you paying attention? He says, this is what you missed when you weren't paying attention. I am really getting spoiled by the help in meetings. And so I'm looking forward to Ask AI Companion, which will be outside of the meetings, but that's still on the app when I'm sitting at my desktop. What if, what if I'm at the coffee shop? What if we're, we're meeting at the coffee shop and we have the most brilliant idea? Yeah. Well, we talked about this. Think about it. In the virtual world where everybody's virtual, full set of tools, full set of features to help us. Now we go to the hybrid world. Some are virtual, some are in a conference room. We'll talk about conference rooms later, right? But what about that one-on-one -on -one meeting? What about that meeting? All right, I'll give you Starbucks. How many companies were started on the back of a napkin? Conversations that happen outside the office, right? In the backyard, right? You know, having, who knows, maybe even having a drink together. But at the end of the day, how do we capture those? And so, 
I wouldn't look to the not so distant future to figure out that Zoom's going to also play a role in figuring out how do we capture those personal one-on-one -on -one or one-on-two -on -two conversations that are happening away from the normal technology. And how are we going to capture that? How are we going to summarize that? How are we going to transcribe that? How we're going to translate that? And maybe someday we got to take a picture of that napkin, right? And maybe that's going to become a whiteboard, but that's where the world is going. We, and I think you're, I think I like your word better, spoiled when we're in this media, but need the power of these solutions when we're not near the technology, right? And technology is always with us. We just have to make sure that, that the future of technology will make it so that it's there to give us what we need, that value on demand and forget about the circumstances of hybrid and virtual. And it's the same thing we talked about even before about, about conference rooms is, you know, look at look what Zoom's doing. People are coming back to the office, forced or magnet, who cares? They're still coming back. But when they come back, this is a perfect example. I'm not looking at you while I'm talking to you, but I wanna look at you when we're in a conference room and we're trying to do this virtual and that's the, the benefit, right? But when no, I'm no, sitting- you're actually here, I flew you in. There you at go, great, right. At great expense. <laughs> but, but when I'm sitting in a conference room across from you, I, want, I don't wanna look at the screen to see you. I wanna see your body language. I wanna see success. In, in, in what I'm saying. I want to see failure. I want to see yeses. I want to see noes. I want to be able to, to ingest those body languages that I can't get sometime over the screen. The problem is I also have to play to the screen because I'm an actor in those yeah. roles. And so Zoom's coming out with great technology where I don't have to look at the screen, but everybody will see what I'm saying. Everybody will see it. So I can now be interfacing with you, but it's like someone took my face and moved it out to the screen so they can see it, right? And I think through Intelligent Director and the different technologies that and features that we're coming out with, we are now trying to make sure that, I used to say, who's having the better meeting, the people in the room or the people on the other side of the screen? And you know, depending on the features that are being used, I'm going back and forth. Because at the end of the day, we're now figuring out how the people in the room can be on the chat. They can still do emojis and give hearts and hands up. They don't have to play to the screen. They're having a good, equitable experience. Now the people home aren't figuring out which ant is actually talking, right? Now they're seeing us. They're seeing our faces, right? There's going to be name tagging. There's going to be things where we'll now be able to say, hey, it's not just room name dash one, and that's Gary. It'll be able to say, that's Gary. And now... We're all going to be able to participate on equal footing. And I think that's the most important thing going forward is regardless of physically where you are, you should have the value of the full tool set. Yeah, I, mean, I can imagine a situation where we're sitting at a coffee shop and we get the brilliant idea for the new app we're going to build together. And I say, quick, I'm going to go to my car and drive back to my office. You go back to your car, drive back to your office. We'll meet on Zoom so we could use the whiteboard. <laughs> So we instead can do it all just, over again. Right. right let's, let's redo the meeting on Zoom right. so we can have the tools instead of just being at the coffee shop and somehow having, I don't know how it would work. Maybe I need a Zoom robot or, or some sort of the Zoom app, some sort of is on my, I don't know. But I, I, want, I want the Zoom solution to be out with, with what the kids call IRL in real life when I'm at the coffee shop. Maybe that's yeah. some, some and, something and, for and Eric to, think, to come up with next. I think those are some of the things that the future is going to hold for us. But I think that's important is going to, for true equity, I shouldn't have to go to where the technology is. The technology should follow me. And I think that's what we're going to see soon. Um, and I think that's going to bridge that gap. Because like you said, in the middle of brainstorming, you stop brainstorming and you split up to use technology. That's ridiculous, right? You never want to stop that. And here's the other thing. Everybody communicates in their own way. If I like to communicate face-to-face, I shouldn't be slighted that we don't have technology. If I like to communicate in a, in a meeting room, fine, there's technology. If I want to be on a Zoom by myself, there's technology. So it should be that it doesn't matter how we want to communicate, that the Zoom value is with us at all times. Nice. All right. Uh, this was great. Anything else to share with our, our viewers? No, I just, I think, I think the thing to look out for is, look, the world of work is changing. We're going to change with it, Right. It's, it's going to go left. It's going to go right. We're going to see uh, an influx of, of new ways of thinking and working coming. And, and Zoom is doing, Zoom is about human to human connection. That is what our goal is. 
How do we make it so that when humans get together to collaborate, to create, we're there? And I think that's the secret, the secret sauce in Zoom is we're always thinking about easy to use and we're thinking about how humans work. And as long as we keep thinking about those two, we're going to keep adding value as people get together right, and make the world productive. Nice. Well, judging by uh, your earnings reports and judging by what your customers say, you're doing things right. <laughs> well, thank you so much for having me. It's always a pleasure. <laughs> thanks so much. Thanks so much, Gary. And thanks so much, everyone, for watching. Um, please like and subscribe.